My name is Julie Martin, and I'm currently the uh, director, acting director of Experiments in Art and Technology, EAT. When EAT started, Billy and Fred invited me to join, join uh, EAT. I always say that artists are really bad spellers, <laughs> and I could actually spell, so, <laughs> so that I had a talent that uh, was useful. So then I started as the editor of the EAT newsletter, and then just stayed on. And our activities these days is mostly history, documenting the history of EAT, responding to requests for exhibitions, helping curators and scholars, scholars who want to write about it and uh, curators who want to do shows like the uh, recent show at the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art in Seoul. This is a catalog. Uh, EAT Experiments in Art and Technology, Open Ended was the title of, of the show, which was really interesting because they kind of got it. Um, uh, the, one of the legacies of EAT is not only the idea of collaboration between individuals, artists and engineers, artists and engineers or scientists, but the value of interdisciplinary teams of people, one of whom is an artist, that can uh, address other problems in society, or other issues in society. It, 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 what's interesting is kind of an idea whose time had come, that this idea of bringing non-art technology into art, because of course art has its own technology, you know, casting and paints and certainly the whole theory, color theory and, 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 you know, those kind of technologies were developing and developed within the art community, so to speak. But this was really bringing non-art technology into art. I think that was a real difference of what began to happen in the 60s. And the, the kind of writings that Billy and Bob Rauschenberg did, it was more theoretical. It was the idea that um, the artist could enlarge the engineer, but the engineer was, began to work in another area outside of his, his very narrow um, lab, and they worked in an, an area that was more focused on, you know, human uh, individual concerns, individual interests, and that this could inspire the engineer to be a better engineer, and maybe the, uh, and that the technology could be more focused on the individual and individual needs and pleasure and experience and exploration that individuals could undertake on their own. In the 90s, we, uh, we um, interviewed John Pierce, who was uh, head of Billy's uh, group, the uh, communications research group at Bell Labs. And Billy said, you know, you saw with the nine evenings that these guys began to work <laughs> almost full time on, on, the, on the project and they were you know, taking vacation days and they were distracted from their normal research and you didn't stop it. And, and John Pierce said, well, I realized they were committed to something very positive and if I had stopped it, it would have been a very negative thing. So he understood the value of, of being involved in, in something as a, outs, outside just the narrow um, research. So one of our messages was process, not product. That that was one of the, th I mean, really believed in the, whole, the process of individuals working together was a value and not, not some idea that you would come up with a product. It's quite inevitable what the artist, in fact, contributes to the collaboration or to the... Uh, um, to the engineer, but I think when people start talking about it, they just, they enjoy it. They, the, the engineer who works with an artist enjoys being challenged, enjoys uh, thinking about using his or her expertise to do something slightly different uh, to a different audience uh, with, with, with different um, uh, expectations. So I, I, I don't, I mean, I think one of the classic uh, collaborations happened before EAT. It was when Billy was working with artists in New York, and uh, Andy Warhol said, I want a floating light bulb. And so Billy said, okay. And they went back to the labs, and they calculated with, with the kind of ba battery technology of the day, the bulb would have to be almost as big as a house to float. But uh, his neighbor, Billy's neighbor down the street, 
had some uh, heat sealable mylar, which is shiny and could hold helium. So Billy got some of that and showed it to Andy. And he said, oh, that's so great. Let's make clouds. So again, the engineers went off and tried to figure out how, this is before balloons, of course, how to heat seal this, this material in, in a curve and also how to make them stand up and look like clouds. Meanwhile, Andy just looked at the material, folded it over, and made square clouds and said, these are silver clouds. So, you know, so something that came out of it was completely different from what they had thought of. And, of course, it's totally brilliant in the sense of floating sculpture and sculpture, abstract floating sculpture, that responds to the environment, responds to people, has no weight. It, it, I think one of the interests in it beyond just they're gorgeous is this, it, it's a really radical idea. And I, we used to say we would write about what the artist could bring to the collaboration. I'm trying to think. Well, one idea was a sense of scale, human scale. The artist is very, is very um, sensitive to scale. They're sensitive to material. They're sensitive to economy of material. You know, you, you do the, the best with the least. Work that is, has all this frou-frou is not very interesting. Um, I mean, a commitment to the work, commitment to, 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 to showing it, to, to taking personal responsibility. That was another idea. I think the artist is out there, and he or she takes responsibility for the work. For the engineer, sometimes they're not allowed to do as much as they want, maybe given the, given the uh, um, goals of the, of, of the corporation, or they can say, well, my boss made me do it this way. So this whole idea of working in an environment where you take responsibility, we felt that that was something that the artist could bring to the, to the collaboration. So the, the, these, it wasn't about w physically what they were doing. It was really this kind of uh, enc encouraging the individual to be, to be the best, freest, the best that they can. So the collaboration of... of, of um, Different groups of people working on on areas of uh, areas of issue, issue, issues in society is is really really valuable.